Hello there. So this is my brain cancer. Hmm? Isn't it nice? When you are diagnosed with the, uh, well, is this working? Yes. When you are diagnosed with the cancer, uh, you are officially declared a patient. Mm? You are diseased. Uh, and your life changes. Mm? Your life uh, really does change. Your life becomes a procedure. Mm? Uh, so you go through very s several very defined steps. Uh, you go to a doctor, uh, he makes the diagnosis, uh, he, uh, sorry, my voice, my voice trembles a little, please tolerate it. <laughs> um, you take an appointment to have a surgery, uh, then they take the tumor out of your body, and uh, then they have uh, some exams on the tissue which they took out of your body, and they decide if uh, uh, you have to have... Uh, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, or some, or some other treatment. Um, or this way, okay. But in some way, um, in front of this very standard procedure, another uh, thing happens. In, in a way, you cease to exist, uh, because you become a patient. In more than one way, you're not a human being anymore, okay? So in some way, you are replaced by your uh, clinical records. Hmm? And uh, um, those records, uh, yes, they're talking about you, but they're not really talking about you, meaning that uh, they uh, talk about some of uh, your body parameters, they are images of your body, uh, they are, but they, their language is really, really different than the language of human beings. As a human being, you really disappear a bit, okay? Uh, because those clinical records are made to, uh, to, be, looked by, uh, to be looked by doctors, by technicians, by professionals, and that's very important, of course, but that's not the whole story. Because as a human being, not a patient, you are left with uh, lots of questions. Huh? Now I'm a patient, what happens? Can I study? Can I have fun? Can I be creative? Can I make love? Can I research? Can I do science? Can I do something? Hmm? Can I or is this some or is uh, this situation up to someone else uh, do i have to delegate or uh, can i do something for myself it's a very big question okay and uh, actually medicine doesn't have the answers to this kind of question or maybe they have some uh, good sense answers okay but they're not uh, really that uh, focal for you you are a patient okay and uh, then, speaking about the specific disease, cancer, it's a very peculiar disease uh, because it has to do with the food you eat, with the environment you live in, with the uh, society you live in, with your life rhythms, with your lifestyle. Uh, someone even says that uh, you yourself, the diseased person, have a lot to do with the fact that you have cancer. Am I really sure that I don't have anything to do with the fact that this thing is growing inside of me? Hmm? And again, medicine does a very important job, but always, or almost always, luckily there are some really intelligent and human people in medicine, uh, often it, uh, um, medicine uh, forgets lots of these things, okay? Forgets, doesn't treat uh, many of these things, doesn't handle or assess many of these things. For medicine, sometimes you are just a fitting part of an equation, okay? You have a disease because you have some symptoms and there's a diagnosis and then there's a therapy, okay? You are an equation. But that's, all, that's not all there is to it, obviously. So I decided to change this situation. What I did is to start from information. Uh, remember at the beginning I said uh, that uh, the everything starts at you, human being, disappearing and becoming a patient. Uh, and the data which is associated to your body, to, your, to, your, to the human being, okay, is uh, expressed in very peculiar languages, which are not languages for human beings, are languages for doctors. So what I did is to start from there. I took my clinical records and I transformed them into a very personal version of open data. I put them on the web and I created a thing which I called open source cure. 
In many cultures, the word cure means lots of different things. A cure can be something medical, can be something psychological, can be something which confronts with the society, with relations. There are many versions in, across the places of the earth for the word cure. What I did is to disclose my data, my, clinic, my clinical data, and to invite everyone, all society, to participate in my cure. This has had radical results. Let's start from one. In uh, Palermo, just a, few uh, just a few days ago, uh, an art collective used the images, uh, the images of my brain tumor uh, as a projection mapping, as big as a building facade, uh, as a visuals for, um, for their concert. 35 videos have been produced using my, uh, the images of my tumor. About 600 poems have been uh, written uh, for me <laughs> and uh, for my condition. 15, about 15,000 testimonies for, from people who have now or have had my same disease have been sent to me and we have started a dialogue, very complex dialogue with, with 15,000 people, okay? But it's really, really important for me. 60 doctors have contacted me and we are not speaking, uh, some articles on the news have uh, said, okay, magicians will come and say, you're healed if you take this plant. No, 60 real doctors with uh, white coats have contacted me offering uh, good, practical, scientific advice, uh, saying, okay, come and see me. Even more, of these 60 doctors, 40 of them spontaneously received reviews from about 500 people, which, were, which have been uh, their patients or ex-patients. So doctors reviewed, well, nice. And about 50,000 different strategies to cure cancer have been sent to me of a, an enormous variety and types from uh, official medicine to alternative therapies uh, to magic to esotericism uh, to going on vacation. <laughs> mm? 50,000. And about 200 people actually helped me and Doriana, who is my companion and she's right there with me, uh, helped me to browse through all this information. And as of now, uh, through all this help, uh, uh, I have formed my strategy. And my strategy to confront with cancer is a very peculiar strategy because it's way beyond what classical medicine does. It's a strategy that goes all around the world and across thousands of years of cultures because it's a strategy which unites harmoniously uh, surgery, uh, oncology, homeopathy, Chinese medicine, medicine uh, and Hebraic uh, esotericism, and, and a radical change in lifestyle and diet. And I said harmoniously, meaning that all the parties involved are informed. And as a, a nice side note, now my tumor, a 3D replica of my tumor, is on Second Life. And you can have tumor as well, because you can print one on Thingiverse. Mm, if you have a 3D printer. No one commiserates me. It's fantastic. It's the perfect situation to get healed. Mm? Mm. No one is sad and everyone does something. And most important of all, everyone involved is really feeling part of a human society. Okay? Not uh, having to deal with a patient or a diseased person. Human society. This is, I feel, is a good use for technology. Mm? And it goes way beyond, uh, you know, the usual discussion on open data, open data, open data, megabytes, megabits, uh, uh, terabytes, etc. okay? It's real life human technology. And this, for me, is an open cure, but watch out, because also for you is an open cure. 